Hello my friends, William Poloniak here again from Old Health Foundation. In the juice formula today I'm making an anti-inflammatory juice with celery, onions and a few other ingredients. Let's look at my other ingredients. In addition to the onion and the celery I have red Swiss chard, collard greens, 130 grams of turmeric, 130 grams of ginger, one whole garlic uh, head and of course carrots and a little bit of dandelion. Now before I start making juice I want to point out that I'm using the front loading feed tube and the near zero blowback cutter both of which minimizes and almost 100 percent gets rid of blowback. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with three ice cubes to cool down the cutter and the feed tube. We're going to start with the onions. Next we'll do some celery. So as you can see the near zero blowback cutter is doing an excellent job on celery which is usually very difficult to shred. And I want to point out that because the near zero blowback cutter does such an excellent job, you'll be tempted to put in more produce, but don't do that. Less produce is more effective. So let's continue with more celery. What the near zero blowback cutter is doing an excellent job. Celery is usually very difficult to shred. Now the motor is working hard, so what I'm going to do now is clean the grid. Celery is very, very fibrous, as most greens are, but celery is especially fibrous. So put the grid in the palm of your hand like so. Scrape both sides and clean the knife off. Don't hold the grid like so to clean it. Put it in the palm of your hand. And we'll reassemble and continue. This time I'm going to put through some red Swiss chard. This is more effective. Up to 23, so three more ice cubes. Next, the collard greens, and I'll do two or three leaves at a time, roll it into a ball and feed in the stem and then first. And now I'm going to start with my carrots. After my first two carrots, I'm going to clean the grid. The first two carrots pushes out most of the greens pulp. We'll clean the grid and then we'll continue with the rest of the carrots. There's a little bit of unprocessed uh, produce in the feed tube and I'm going to do a uh, close-up to show you that. Now one of the things I like about the front-loading feed tube is you can see down in here to see if there's any unprocessed pulp and what I usually do is put in some pulp into the feed tube and force that last plug through. Now what I'm going to do now is pull out the thermometer, clean the grid, in the grid holder and the feed tube, mix the produce and make some juice. When you have a really good mix, continue folding them into cloths and pressing juice. Now in between juicing sessions we keep these cloths in the freezer, press the water out of course. Now we'll unfold them and press some juice pulp into juice and we'll start with three generous spoons of pulp 
and I'm going to show you my less work six cloth method. This folds over, flatten that down, bring it into as tight a package as you can, make a little fold at the back, and then with your fingers pull this under for a tight package. Set that aside and we're going to press two cloths full of pulp at one time. Watch my folding technique and flatten that down. Pull this into as tight a package as you can. A little crease at the front. Pull the back flap with your fingers underneath into a tight package. Set it aside. When you're on your last cloth, advance that all the way. Here's my six cloth method. This goes forward, this goes over, the spent cloths go on top, and again two more cloths into the press. Keep your eye on the bowl, it's already full, so I'm going to turn that off. And what I'll do is continue folding these cloths. And then set it aside, this goes forward, that goes over the spent cloths go on top. But because my container is full, I'm going to put this into bottles. And to prevent this from dripping on my countertop, it's going to go back. But not just a little bit, because believe me, you will forget. Make it very, very obvious. So let's fill some bottles. Now I'm filling this from the back side so the camera can get a good look at what I'm doing. Normally I would fill it from the front. And I'm leaving about 10% to add filtered or distilled water. And again, two scoops on top of the old pulp. Fold it into a tight package. I'm going to show you my folding technique again. Now after I press the rest of these cloths, I'm going to show you how the Whole Health Foundation model makes over 10% more juice. So this goes forward, that goes over, Spent cloths go on top, again centered, left to right, centered front to back, make any adjustments you need to, all the way back, back it off a little bit, and keep your eye on the bowl because this is very, very full. So what I'm going to do now is form this into tight packages and repress it. Notice how I'm making a tight ball. And watch my folding tip. Fold this under two or three times. Again, keep your eye on the pole. It's getting very, very full. Folding it under to minimize slippage. Do that in both directions. Turn it upside down, flatten it, set it aside. And if that's that all the way, but it looks like it might almost be too full. I'm going to stop it there and press a little more later. Now as you can see I've repackaged this into three double packets and I'm going to press it and use a measuring beaker to show you how much more juice we can get using the premium Whole Health Foundation model juicer. Now this is very very important to have this in the center. Centered left to right, centered front to back, adjust this patty. We don't want this to be off center all the way back and this time I'm going to wait for juice flow before I back it off. Now I'm going to watch for juice flow and there it is. I'm going to back it off a little bit. And then once I get traction between these two cloths, I'll advance that all the way. So far we have six ounces, so let's put the last packet in. Again, very important to be centered left to right centered front to back, adjust it. It's very, very important to have these centered because there's tremendous pressure here. All the way back and as soon as I get juice flow, I'm going to back it off and wait for there to be traction between those two. There we go, back it off a little bit. And as soon as I get traction, I'll advance a little more. And then all the way. You do not want this to slip apart. So far I've got 14 ounces of juice and I usually leave this steady stream going until it turns into droplets. 
And there are several things that contribute to, toward getting more juice. One is the near zero low back cutter, and the other is the bottom plate that enables you to leave this up as long as you want. Now notice the steady stream is now droplets. So I'll back that off. And it looks like we got slightly over 14 ounces of juice. That's one full bottle of juice. So what I'm going to do now is set that back so it's very, very obvious. Pour this into the collection container and fill more bottles. I'm topping off these bottles with either filtered or distilled water. And the way to get your juice to last 5 to 10 days in the fridge is to top off your bottles until you have a convex curve on the top as you see here alright as you can see I have 5, 10, 12 bottles of juice from that batch one of these bottles is from repressing the already uh, spent pulp and we got over 10 percent more plus enough for a taste test so let's do a taste test all right, my friends, we'll do a taste test of this anti-inflammatory juice with celery. Oh, I definitely taste the celery. A little bit of a bite from the garlic, the ginger, and the turmeric. Well, I hope you like what you've seen, and if you do, please tell a friend. If you'd like to telephone me, my phone number is 760 7530321 my email address is developtrust.cox.net and my webpage is wholehealthfound.com. See you in the next video. Delicious. I always love fresh pressed juice, but it will last five to ten days if you bottle it properly.